What is going on guys, Alex Z back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys what you need to make a 600 plus wheel horsepower 350Z, 370Z, or G37, or G35, HR, or VHR. Um, pretty much all the supporting mods that you're gonna need and also somewhat of how to install them. Not completely on all of them, I'm gonna show you how to install, but I'm definitely gonna be showing you what you gonna need in order to achieve um, anything above 600 before I show you guys I gotta hit that on ramp make sure we have room fitting on there so we already mocked up how long we need it so we went ahead and put tape right here so now we're just gonna cut it and then we're gonna put our fitting on the a in line and then get it everything nice and um, sealed with red sealant and then it should be good so we have it cut so we're starting to put this on we just have this put this over push down and turn and then we're gonna use a wrench to get it even more down until we can see it at the top. Both of the fittings on now. Focus. Pretty nicely. So everything's good. It's not coming off. Ready to go. Alrighty guys, so this is where the oil pressure sensor goes, which is this. So this went here before. So we teed it off with this MPT feed tap, I mean. So then we put the sensor above the tap and then you put this 1 8 MPT in there in the hole that comes in this T-tap and then you put the T-tap into the block. Now I did have issues putting my T-tap into a block so I had to actually re-thread it with a little bit bigger than one size up from 1 8 uh, tap um, so that it would go in smoothly. If you do decide to do it that way just make sure you're using the right thread. And I did kind of struggle for it to go in smooth, but with the wrench, um, it went in just enough so that I shouldn't have any problems. But we'll see how that works out. So then, now we're running this 4 in line. It's gonna go directly to that MPT fitting. And then we have the line running up, above, kind of like where the motor mount goes. And then it goes right through there kind of where this control arm is into that hole over here and then it just feeds straight down kind of like where the fuel lines go Okay, back of the car next to the passenger axle so the 4 in line you guys saw I routed it um, over the tie rod runs like to the side of the car all the way down like where the pinch welds are like if you're gonna jack it up 
back up to this area right here. You can see my 4 a.m. line shooting up. I ran it over the axle, like to a point where it doesn't hit. Um, there's a few lines up there. You can zip tie it or, you know, do whatever you gotta do. Uh, runs up to here over this um, rear subframe. So yeah, this is the rear subframe. You can see the diff right there. Then comes back down this way and then it feeds the oil to the turbo right here. And then for oil return, goes from the 10 a.m. fitting on the side of the oil pan spacer right there. Have it routed to the sway bar. Going down this way, this way, this way. Connects to the 4 a.m. over here. Or as you guys saw already, also feeds down the same way. My oil return goes to this bong right here. So this is like a um, oil kind of like, um, think of it as an oil pan. So basically all the oil that the um, turbo is being fed drips down into here, kind of like an oil pan. And then I run an oil pump to that. This just helps the flow of the oil. A um, little bit easier so that it doesn't get like backed up and shoots uh, smoke. I don't know the exact science, but a lot of rear mount guys have this on a lot of different platforms, and they all recommend having something like this. So I went ahead and get this made by a fabricator. Um, so just a 10 a in line from here. This 10 a in line feeds directly to this pump, so it's not a very long line from here to there, and then from there it goes straight. All the way down just like the 4 a.m. line down to the side of the car around where you guys saw on the front into the oil pan not that hard very easy to do um, I'll show you guys how I have this wired right now I have a complete wire set up for this hey guys um, I'm currently oil, uh, wiring up the oil pump so I just wanted to go through how I'm doing it because not many actually there's not a single video on how to do it um, on a 350Z at least, so if you're boosting your Z and you're doing the remount, you're gonna need an oil pump. Of course, I already mentioned that. So I already have it plumbed up. So on your pump, you're gonna get a ground and a power wire, just like that. So I just put a butt connector on those two, and you're gonna need a relay. So right now I'm putting a power wire from the relay right here, literally right here. So this one's going to the power to the pump, and then there's also a ground on the pump. You're going to ground that to a chassis, so it's grounded right there. And you're also going to need a ground for the relay. So I grounded the relay and the pump wire together right there. So next, if you want to have ignition signal, it is different if you have uh, want to run your pump on a switch, like a little like a, a literal switch but I just want mine to turn on when I turn on ignition so I have to run my white wire so my white wire goes to ignition so I have a red black yellow and white wire on this relay so and this one white is ignition so I'm gonna use a fuse tap to an ignition fuse source to um, get an ignition signal so I'll show you guys how I'm gonna do that right now so this is going to connect to this into a fuse so for this I'm using a cigarette lighter fuse and so you're going to want the cigarette lighter fuse the one that you're pulling off to go closer to this connection right here and then in the back you're going to want to run something smaller than a 15 amp you cannot be bigger than the one that you're taking off you're going to run that one behind it so I have a 10 amp fuse and then the wire is going to connect through here do the white so it's going to connect to this white wire and that's how I'm going to get the ignition signal so that when I turn the key that's how it turns on basically by itself without a switch so you will also need a battery source so being that it's a really big pump it's going to pull a lot of power you're going to want to use 14 AWG wiring for everything you don't want to use anything smaller for anything you're going to use a 12 AWG but 14 should be fine so I'm going to run a really long power wire all the way up to the battery through this yellow one. And you could have used like red to the to the battery and yellow to the pump. Either or would have worked fine. But just because the red wire on the pump, so I wanted to match it to the red wire on the relay. Um, that's the only reason I did that. 
Well, this is gonna be ran all the way through the car so I have all my plastic interior off. I ran it up to where the ECU plugs up, so I'll show you guys that right now. So it literally comes up to here. Uh, the yellow wire is gonna be ran right here. And then I'm gonna run a fuse tap to it so that if anything goes bad, uh, the fuse blows, not the pump. So this is gonna be kind of like our safety thing. And the power wire is just gonna be going into where this battery connects to on one of these 12s right here. And that's pretty much how that is done. And then for the ignition, I already told you guys, you're gonna go to the kick panel. So this white wire is gonna run all the way through the side of this car into the kick panel on this fuse. And I'm just gonna pull out the cigarette lighter right here. So the ones I used for this were, hold up, somewhere right here. I can't see it, but, oh, right here, cigarette lighter, 15A. And then for my boost gauge right here, for my e-boost controller. You're saying that. Oh. Confidently. So you're gonna pull the fuse out of the cigarette lighter right here. And then you're gonna get your boost controller signal from here, if you're running an e-boost controller. So the two ignition signals is going to be this one, ignition, I don't even know what that is, C-O-N-T, continuous injection, I don't know what the hell. But that's a uh, ignition signal and cigarette lighter is an ignition signal. So you're going to be, if you need a tap ignition signal, you're going to get it from those two. So I'm going to go ahead and wire everything up and prime it and see if it turns on. So for your vibrant block, this is your vacuum block. This is where all your turbo vacuum lines are coming from. And there's actually quite a few. I didn't even think you needed this many lines, like vacuum lines, when I first started. This is just a better way, instead of teeing off vacuum from one spot and you have a bunch of T's all over the engine bay, this is just a very clean way for you to organize your vacuum lines. So first, you need your source. So for my vacuum source, I got it from the brake booster. But I would honestly, I would change that to where we put this cap right here on the back of the manifold. That one line that we deleted for the oil catch can. I would run that cap as a vacuum source instead. Instead of the boot brake booster, even though this does work, but you already have an open vacuum port, so why not just use it? Instead of, it, of um, modifying your vacuum block line, but if you guys want to do it like this, I'll show you guys how I did it. All I did was cut the vacuum line right here in the middle. I got a T to fit the two lines. And then I matched the same diameter of the line off the T. So it's a T right here. And this is the third one. So it's this way it connects. And then this is the supply. It comes straight down from here. All the way down. And then fed into here. Try to keep it as away from heat as much as you can. You can use zip ties to clamp it, or I had some extra, some of these clamps right here. But honestly, there's a way better ways to doing it. But for now, this works for me. Until I have any issues with it, I don't see myself upgrading it. So, once you have your source, you're gonna start connecting your boost lines, right? So, one vacuum line you're gonna need is for the fuel regulator. One of those lines goes directly to this fuel regulator and basically it's how you get vacuum to it so that you can see your fuel pressure. You need vacuum to it. So that's just how I have it routed. It goes straight under here. Routes this way. See, not very hard. Comes under into this port. And this is for the fuel regulator. The next two lines are for my boost controller and wastegate. So this line right here is gonna go directly down to here. As you can see I have it kind of like zip tied it to the harness and they both come up to right here. I don't recommend, I had to drill this holes right here. I don't recommend doing it this way or just make sure that the holes are big enough to that where these rubber lines don't touch. Right now mines are touching and over time eventually they are gonna crack and split and i'm gonna have a vacuum leak so i do have to fix this but it goes directly into here which is good because the boost controller i have which is the e-boost 2 it says keep away from heat as much as possible from turbo smart so as you can see it i have it tucked in right there so i have one line from here 
and I have it connected to this fitting right here that's con that's provided by Turbo Smart for you to actually connect this really tiny vacuum block I mean I'm sorry this really tiny vacuum line into the actual controller it re does require a vacuum source into the actual controller like the actual gauge why I'm not too sure but that's what the instructions say so and I haven't had any issues so one line is directly for the controller itself so it's just like an adapter from this bigger vacuum line and then the fitting into this really small vacuum line and then I'll actually show you guys behind the controller where this connects so very easy um, to set this up not hard at all and then this is the actual solenoid so the other vacuum line so the way this is set up is that this line on the side goes to the side of the wastegate and mine is routed through the side all the way down into the actual wastegate and that's how you get the pressure to read and what boost controllers do it allows you to manipulate your boost levels and you can actually double your wastegate springs so right now I have 12 psi springs in there with the boost controller you could actually get it up to 24 so this is good to have and then you could actually change it in the controller to what amount of boost you want from your wastegate pressure all the way to poly 24 so I really recommend one of these if you don't want to run full boost all the time and you want to change your pressures every now and then this is really good to have and the eBoost 2 is actually super cool because it actually even shows your boost levels. So you don't need a boost gauge because this is a, um, you don't need a boost gauge because this is a boost gauge and a boost controller, two in one. So super cool to have. So the way it's set up, the side one right here, it's even numbered on the instructions. If you just read the instructions, it's so easy. So the side one right here to the left, it's going to go straight to the wastegate this is going to be the feed so this one it goes directly to where i showed you guys in the block going down this way go straight to the block right there like i showed you guys earlier and then on the right side it's just vented to atmosphere and as long as it's venting to atmosphere you're good to go you could actually put a light on it and vent it somewhere outside the car but um there's actually a little hole in here that i have that i just have it vented down that way and it's super easy and one of the ways I routed this so for your 350Z's I don't know if other cars are the same but I actually routed this down by the fender for the line that goes to the wastegate it goes straight down this way into a hole that you can't even see from here but if you look under in the fender you could actually see it just shoots straight down feeds into here and right now it's covered by the fender liner so it feeds straight down, super cool, goes down, and it'll actually run through all the way through the side of the car into the wastegate. Super easy, so that you can keep all this stuff away from heat and, you know, away from the engine bay into that way. I, re I really recommend you running it this way. And then the wiring is super easy, it's just power and ground. The two gauges that I recommend you getting for sure is going to be your boost controller, also because it has uh, a boost um, gauge in it. So definitely get eBoost 2. It is expensive, but it is 100% worth it. Definitely recommend you guys getting this. So I recommend this eBoost controller and an AFR gauge so you can check your AFRs. Alrighty guys, so these are the IDX 1300s. As you can see, I already have them on the rail. Very nice. Also, the first time I installed these, I didn't put two rings, I thought this ring just went under, but because there's two parts to this injector for it to sit on the fuel rail, um, you gotta make sure that the second part is clamped to the injector with this ring, and then the bottom to this ring. Alrighty, so I just put the injectors in, and I had the pigtails on them, so easy to connect. Just connected them through the connectors. Everything nice, so this is all good now. So we are prepping this for the fuel pump. So these yellow wire from the relay is gonna go into the stock fuel pump connector. 
and so does the ground. I'll show you guys how it's routed in a second, but I'll put the link in the uh, to the video that I watched that pretty much shows you how to do all of this in super detail. The video is like an hour long, so. So first part is you want to take out the pin from the connector. Sorry, it's not in focus. And then you're just going to solder it on. We got the heat shrink in there? Alright guys, for the fuel pump, um, we have it completely wired and just taking my yellow power into this first pin right here and I soldered it. Negative wire goes into the middle one. So there's a total of six pins. So I have my ground in the middle, my power at the end. You do have to solder this onto the pin. Um, I don't recommend you cutting the stock wire and then butt connecting it because that's just not going to work. But that's how you do that. I have, if you guys saw my Hellcat fuel pump video, my fitting right here for the fuel return sits right here and it runs a line. So this line goes directly under the fuel pump, it goes straight down or up, depends on how you're riding it, all the way down to the side of the car, like the oil lines do. All the way through here, goes straight up. So it's literally right under the car, shoots up this way and that becomes fuel return so that fitting on top of the fuel pump that you guys just saw goes to the bottom of the regulator not to the side not to the left but feeds directly from the bottom that is your return it is not your feed um, I'm only telling you guys this because everyone messes this up so it goes from the fitting on your fuel pump inside the car down to the side of the car down the fuel tank, down to the side of the car, go straight up this way, like where your exhaust headers are. That's why you have this heat protectant orange stuff. This is very good stuff. Um, you don't want to run heat protectant and something on your fuel line, especially if it's going to be next to the exhaust. And that is your return it goes directly under the fuel regulator. You're going to want to run a gauge that way you can see what the hell's going on with your fuel. You're gonna want about 50 PSI and you should be good to go. Again, if you guys wanna set up your fuel pump the correct way, make sure you watch my video on the Hellcat pump and that's how you set it up. And then there's gonna be a fitting in your CJM fuel return kit. If you are gonna do it this way, it becomes your feed. That feed is gonna run from the quick disconnect on the stock line. So if you guys remember, there was a stock little dampener here. You're gonna unbolt that remove it and that goes directly into a quick disconnect fitting down there kind of by the exhaust you're gonna delete that and you're gonna put an AN fitting on that and you're gonna run your feed you're gonna change the feed into an AN line so it's gonna that is gonna come up to this area kind of like the return remember that orange thing is the return so it's gonna come up this way and it's gonna feed this way and that's gonna come straight into here so that's all you're doing is you're remo removing the stock line and turning it into a AN line. There is another fitting that I thought I had that had an AN fitting back here. So, but this is not it. I'll post a picture of it right now. But this is only a one fitting um, fitting. So one AN fitting on this uh, field dampener. But I thought it was two, but I don't know. I fucked up. So um, I had to actually cut my CJM lines so that I could get the oil, so that I could get the um, gas to return back. So your return from your feed is gonna go to this side of the fuel regulator, right? So feed is this way, goes down that way, into here, right? Onto the top. And then originally you would have another fitting back here, and this line would go straight down and to the side of your fuel regulator. And that is the second spot. So you only have two lines connected to this. So one at the bottom, down here. There's another fitting down there. You're gonna have your return. So this is from the fuel pump to here, right? And what it does is shoot gas down and then it actually shoots down and back to the fuel pump. Uh, nothing from the fuel pump actually comes up this way. This shoots down. So this goes down, back to the fuel pump. And the way this gets fuel, the regulator, is from this line on the side, which is the one that would originally connect to the back of this. 
and that's how that would work if you guys have questions you guys get the emmy but it would come to the back of this and the feed would be on top again the feed is that quick disconnect line that comes down here it comes up and it goes right here so that is your feed that's how your engine's going to get gas and all the excess stuff is going to come out from this port down to the side right here now if you guys have to I recommend you get the right fitting but if you can't get it for whatever reason you can do it like this all you do is you cut your feed right here and I run another T so this is a T right so one this is a one way and this is the thing you're gonna connect to it right so essentially it's the same thing so you're gonna shoot gas this way your feed you're gonna tee off your feed and you're gonna make the return come off of your T, off of your feed. So you're taking fuel out of your feed into the return. So this is the quick disconnect fitting that comes from down there, shoots up, teed off. This line continues to be the feed, shoots straight to there. And this is the return. You're gonna connect it to the other side of the T and this side goes into the side of the regulator. But I don't like this way just because it's not as clean and it's not as secure as the other way. Eventually these warm clamps are gonna give out and it's gonna leak. I don't know when, but right now it's not leaking, it's working, but eventually it will. So just do it the right way. Don't do this T way. And you're gonna wanna get the correct fitting for this, the two port fitting, so that your turn goes from the back of this fitting onto the side instead of teeing off your feed. You get what I'm saying? Cause this is essentially the T, um, it's the same thing, it's just a lot cleaner with AN fittings instead of having this thing, if you get what I mean. Now when you guys are routing this line back here for the fuel pump fitting, the return line, the one that goes to the bottom of the regulator, I found it easiest to, because some people try to shove it up so that you pull it up from here so they'll be under the car, trying to push it up. And there's a hole right here, so if you put your hand in here, you'll see that there's a hole and that goes to the bottom of the car, like where the floor is. Some people go under the car and try to push this up and then try to like pull it up and then get this on. I found it easiest if you try to shove it down. So you work from up here where I'm at and you just shove the line down. It's actually a lot easier to run it that way instead of trying to push it up. 